in attendance. <laughs> and but other than that, I don't think we did anything. No, not really. I mean, we, we let the movie, I would say that the, the movie will tell you what it needs to be. And I think that we worked that way. It was that the movie just became the movie. Except and contractually, we were <laughs> people. So we were in, in big poop. <laughs> But, but everyone was really supportive of that cut. Everyone yeah. said, no, you don't want to mess with the movie. And so, yeah, there wasn't, beyond that one, that one, that one effect shot, there wasn't any adding or subtracting. But, but funny enough, the Troy uh, may see it like it's normal, but it's completely abnormal that this happened. You, know? <laughs> you have a PG-13 movie contractually with a studio, and then the time comes and you get a hard R, and they tell you you cannot change anything because it's pervasive scariness, which is like talking about morbid obesity in a candy store, I guess. It's completely impossible to solve. And, 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 uh, and, and then the studio supported us. They said, leave it as an R. I mean, that's like a jaw-dropping moment for me, with, because I know. But, but it, it was uh, beautiful to get that. It was like a badge of honor. Thank you. You know, it depends. Uh, it depends on the project. Some projects, the, the hardest thing to do, without a doubt, is to write. I, without a doubt, the hardest job is to fill that blank page. That's the first step. That's the blueprint. That's the the music on the on the paper. You know. And then I think that the the most beautiful part of the process for me is editing, because all the bullshit is gone. You know, you 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 have one movie in your head. You put it on the page, you have another movie in your head as director. Now all you have is the movie that is left, you know, against budget, against an actor that never shows up, against the studio that is pressuring you. But finally you have, you started thinking, I'm going to build a mansion with a hundred rooms and a hundred windows. And then you end up and you have five rooms, five windows and a bunch of bricks. And that's the editing. The, the reality is there and you build what you want. And that's the most joyful process. Producing is great. Because frankly, uh, you learn. I think that uh, Troy did choices in the movie that would be completely against my instinct and that were entirely different than what I would do. And they worked. And they were teaching me the same way that Juan Antonio uh, Bayona in the orphanage, he made his own proposal of what a horror movie was. And I, I would have never thought it would work. And now I, I just produced a movie in Spain called Los Ojos de Julia, Julia's Eyes. And Guillem Morales, the director, again, came back and I was like, but why? Why this way? Why that way? And then I see the movie and I go, ah, that's why. And I'm learning. You learn a lot as producer. Yeah, I, I think it is, it's such a classic movie in terms of, of sort of that inspiration from, from the 70s that... Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, no, I mean, there wasn't, uh, there wasn't any pressure at all that we felt on our end to, to do a post-3D version oh, no. of it all. No, no we, we did an investigation of 3D because the studio did ask how much would it cost to be 3D. Yeah. But look, this movie was done for a fraction of the cost. It, this was done because we wanted to preserve the ending we wanted. We wanted to preserve the hardcore stuff we wanted. Uh, and if we went over budget or we went too big, we were going to start losing those freedoms. So it's a low budget movie for the size of production it is. And when the studio heard the number that it would require to shoot it on 3D, they said, keep it on 2D. It was, mind you, it's a combination of very fortunate <laughs> economic timing and in artistic integrity. Now, uh, 3D, I love it. I want to do it. I, I was not in favor of it in The Hobbit, personally, because at that time I thought, uh, you know, it needed to be mm, completely cohesive with the trilogy. But that's the only property in which I was not inclined to explore it. You know, I, I, I think the way I do compositions, the way I do dynamics in the frame is perfectly suited for 3D. I want to 
I want to do it, and the next movie I do will be 3D. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Well, it's funny because I was asked that earlier. What scares me? By a I, woman. <laughs> I think that I think that what scares me scares everyone. I mean, it's just it's just uncertainty of not knowing. And I think that that that, that kind of works in terms of what this movie is. Is this little girl in this horrible situation, not knowing what's going to happen to her? She has nowhere to turn, no one that'll listen to her, and it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And I think that, that that's something that we can all relate to, you know, not being, basically being backed into a corner and not knowing where you're going to go. Yeah, I, I think the essence of fear, there are only two on buttons for fear, and only two in any permutation you want. One is when something that shouldn't be is, you know, meaning a presence, and the other one is an absence, you know. Uh, it can work in, with someone walking into an empty corridor and something that should be there is not, or something that shouldn't be there is. That's it. I mean, that's essentially the, the fact that uh, I can show you a scene of a woman in a, in, in a bedroom and a man walks in, a 70-year-old man walks in. It, 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 it's without context, it's not scary. But if that is her dead father, it's a scary. So the second thing about what fear is, is those two switches in context. So without context, like humor, horror doesn't work. Now what scares me, frankly, in real life politicians, <laughs> corporations, uh, people that think they know what, what the world should be, that people with certainty scare the shit out of me. You know, people that say this is the way it should be, I go, holy fuck. You know, uh, uh, those things scare me. And supernatural things, I've, I have heard ghosts. I've never seen ghosts. The last I ghost that you, you did? Yeah, you can tell them that. But I, I, the last ghost I heard was in New Zealand. We were sc scouting for The Hobbit, and we went into a haunted room in a hotel that was famous for having a haunted room, and of course, I asked for the haunted room. And I, and I told everyone in the, in the party, I said, don't, don't come fucking with me at midnight knocking on the door, no, please. No, 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 Peter saw it in, in his old apartment in front of the opera house. And he saw a very famous apparition that is called the screaming woman. You know, yeah, that, that, that is different. Uh, but I went into the, this is in, uh, near Waitomo. And, and I took the room and about midnight, or 1 a.m., I started hearing a guy screaming. And I, I went and it was coming from a window in the bathroom. I opened the window and there's nothing but a narrow alley there. And I go, oh, well, fuck. And I go back to the bed and I start hearing a woman sobbing and howling. And I go back and it comes from the same place. And uh, I, the rest of the night I watched the episodes of the unit. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, I was so fucking scared I needed some real men around me. <laughs> I, honestly, I mean, he's, he's, he's a huge influence on me, but I think that at the same time, that the, things, that the things that influence both of us are very similar as well. So, you watch my short, and I think you could see yeah. some of Del Toro in it as well. And it's it's just I think it's just a similar a similar like of things, a similar desire of things, and, and things that that that, uh, that inspire us. So yeah, we had the same fucked up childhood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but the 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 other idea was, I believe as producer and producer director that your duty is to create a beautiful horror film. You know something that really resonates in the orphanage or this or any of the movies that they need to have a really beautiful valid aesthetic proposal and Troy had it in space and, and I definitely made a, a very right away I made, I made a decision that because most horror movies that take places in houses are like old run down houses and I was like no this house is going to be beautiful Gordon. in the daytime just a, a place where an audience wants to be 
so that when you start introducing those scares, then it makes you a little uncomfortable. Like, wait a minute, this is a really nice house. Why is this stuff happening here? And and so it, it does bring a, a, a more rich, a, a richer sort of back. You know, you, you're waiting. You hear the creaking things and the broken windows and stuff. You're waiting for something to happen. But you know, you're seeing this beautiful, beautiful home, and you don't know when something is going to happen. And an entire, for example, the the nursery or the the child's room is entirely inoffensive. Yes, yeah. entirely. Like it looks like out of a, out of a, uh, you know, bed and bed, bath and beyond catalog. You're like, and that that was intentional as yeah. well because the idea was this little girl coming from from Los Angeles, kind of this little hip kid, and and so they, you know, her her dad who doesn't know her very well and his new girlfriend who's never met her, create this room that they think this little nine year old girl would love. Not at all. <laughs> and what happens there is scary. And there is a particular object which is a, a stuffed bear that becomes very menacing. <laughs> favorite novel in the world is Frankenstein, and I'm going to misquote it horribly, but uh, the monster says, I have, I, have such, I have such love in me, more than you can imagine, but if I cannot provoke it, I will provoke fear. <laughs> and I think as a child, as a child that was disfranchised from everything, that was in a world that was the wrong size, run by the wrong people and the wrong morale and the wrong rules.